Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia, and I am the program manager of the Microsoft Reactor Toronto. I will be sharing session resources with you in the chat. But before we begin, I'd like to quickly review two items, our code of conduct and event guidelines. First, please take a moment to review our code of conduct. Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. We encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary, remain professional and on topic. And secondly, our event guidelines. The session is being recorded and will be available on demand through the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. I will share the link in the chat for our YouTube channel. And if you've not been on a live stream to YouTube before, please know that you must create an account on YouTube in order to access and interact in the chat. You can set that up now. And if you're unable to use the chat but have questions, feel free to reach out to us through social media or on Meetup. Which brings us to today's session, our second uh, session of the .NET Maui Summer Coding Adventure. I will bring in our speakers here for today, Louise, Hector, and Bruno. Thank you all so much for being here again today. We're very excited about this series and this is day two. So take it away. All right. Thank you very much, Alexia. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on where you are. So welcome again to part two. We are really uh, excited to continue with this .NET MAUI Summer Coding Adventure. But before we uh, go into our topic, I would like to say hi to Bruno. Hello, Bruno. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. Fine. Hello today from Toronto. I see people that we have from Argentina, Germany, Colombia. So hey, if you want to share in the chat, where are you joining? Happy to know. Uh, super happy for this one because this is going to be focused on design, which is very, very bad. And also, hey, super cool. Someone from also from Europe, from the yeah, from the old continent. Just Republic. He's my professor, actually. Hi, Professor hey. Eric. Yes, <laughs> from the Eric. university. Hi. Yeah. Uh, yes, just a quick one. There are some delays between cameras and audio, we just realized. So if you see us talking and our mouth are not meeting the audio, let us know. No I mean, I don't know if we can fix it, <laughs> but it will be fun to know later in the recording. Uh, also, people from Peru. So yes, happy, super happy. And to Mexico. Be ah, yes. Mexico, yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. All right, so well, as, as you said, sometimes we can be a really good uh, developers. We focus usually on the like uh, core of our application, like there are some requirements and we meet them. But when it is about polishing our application, improve the appearance, uh, then it's a big issue. It's a big issue for us because we don't know how to, how to do it. And especially, a uh, nice uh, user interface and also user experience is also important right for the best of our application so today we uh, bring an expert in ui or also he has nice tips and tricks to to share so let's uh, introduce uh, hector hello hector how are hello, you doing? Hello, uh, Bruno. I'm really excited to be here with you today. I'm uh, really excited because it is, this is my first reactor uh, talk. Uh, this is my first English talk also, so I'm a little nervous, but uh, I know that, <laughs> that everything is going to, to be fine. Uh, so I'm a Microsoft MVP with more than 10 years of experience, and I love really designing graphical user interfaces with, with XAML and with .NET MAUI. Uh, I have created a, a lot of challenges, UI challenges with Don and Maui in my YouTube channel. So uh, I, I have a lot of tips to share with you today, a, a lot of slides and a lot of demonstrations. Perfect. So we, we are going to learn a lot uh, from you. So we are really uh, interested in this. So if you want, you can, uh, okay, I think you already shared your screen so we can bring it. Online. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. And yes, well, as uh, we, we, you are getting a lot of comments, uh, wishing you uh, good luck and you will do it great. Okay. So, okay. So, 
if you want, you can start your presentation. But um, uh, I think I can see. I, yet, I can right? see my my slides. Yes, because I see it's kind of uh, like blank, right? D uh -huh, do you see yeah. Bruno the slides? Uh, let's then? let's give it a let's give it a couple of seconds. It usually takes some time. No. Okay. Yes. Let's remove there. So if you want to. Okay, let me uh, reshare the screen. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Yes. Yes. Yes, maybe today is not a good stream yard day. <laughs> or... <laughs> yeah, we were talking a bit about it that this delay or maybe the camera is frozen. Yeah, it's kind of. There it is. There they are. Awesome. Okay. Yes, yes, there, are, there is some delay, but <laughs> we can see it now. OK, perfect. So good luck, Hector. And if you need anything from us, just let okay. us know. And we will. OK, okay. okay. thank you. OK, well, let's start with, with this interesting talk. Uh, today, we're going to, to talk about exploring UI design in .NET MAUI. It is a very super interesting uh, topic that I really like and that I find uh, very interesting. So my name is Hector Perez. I'm a Microsoft MVP in the area of developer technologies. I am also a software independent consultant, and I have a training academy of courses in .NET uh, technologies mainly. So let's start with our talk talking about .NET MAUI controls that let you create graphical interfaces in .NET MAUI. We have basically three categories that we can use uh, when working with .NET MAUI. The first category is the pages category in which we can find uh, several pages that we can use. The, the page that you are going to use the most is the content page because this is the, the, the base, the base uh, page for all your applications. You have other type of pages, for, for example, flyout page, navigation page, tab page. Uh, they basically defines a navigation mode plus uh, one or more content pages. So the page that you are going to use the most is the content page. We also have the layouts. Layouts, uh, you can have more than one layout in your pages. And they define how are your different elements go to display to the user. For example, the stack layout indicates that you can position elements in a stack, in a stack way, for, for example, a horizontal way or a vertical way. With an absolute layout, you can define certain uh, coordinates or certain uh, positions of, of the controls in your graphical interface. We have the grid layout that lets you to specify rows and columns and define some sort of coordinates to place the different controls. And the last category are the views that are the different controls, the different unit independent pieces that you can place in the layouts. We have a lot of views that you can use as part of your .NET MAUI applications that practically let you create any graphical interface that you want. So I'm going to start uh, the demonstrations. I'm going to show you a, a, an application named BMI Calculator. And I'm going to use this demonstration to show you some tools that you can use when you develop applications with .NET MAUI. So I'm going to show you uh, the application in Visual Studio. Here I have Visual, Visual Studio opened. I have a project named BMI Demo which is the application shown in the emulator that you can see on your screen. This is the application in this. It is a very simple application that lets you know your BMI from a weight and a height. I can click on the button that says calculate and it returns you the result if, uh, if, about your health. If you are overweight, if you have a good, uh, a good uh, weight, etc. And this application looks quite good. It is a very simple application. Uh, that demonstrates how to create a, an application. First, we have a content page. That is the page that, that, that is going to occupy all the screen of your, of your device. We have a layout. In this case, it's a vertical layout. We have several elements. For example, uh, a label control. We have uh, uh, different entry controls. We have a button, contro a button control. And each of these controls define different properties that you can customize uh, for the appearance of the application. And the first tool that I want to show you is the toolbox. The toolbox is basically a panel in Visual Studio that lets you drag and drop different elements in your SAML definition. For example, I can drag and drop a button after this entry element. I can specify a text. And the second tool that I want to show you is SAML Code Reload that lets you to, to um, basically 
replace elements or edit your code. And these changes are going to, to, to replicate in real time in your emulator. For example, is if I save the changes and return to the emulator, you can see that the button is now in the, in the screen. I'm going to remove this button that I, that I added. We have another tool named Light Visual Tree that lets you see different elements in your SAML definition. We can see that we have the app element, we have the, the, the main page element, we have the vertical stack layout and each of the controls that are part of the vertical stack layout. We can press on any of, the, of, these, of these buttons and it's going to position us in the SAML definition of this control, which uh, uh, helps you to, to see how is your SAML code uh, defined. You can take an example, for example, for example, of, of a GitHub repository, and you can analyze the structure of the SAML code very easily with this tool. We also have the SAML light preview that you can see on the screen. And uh, we can position over any of the elements of the screen, and we can see uh, in a quick way which are the different properties and which are the different values for each of the controls in the graphical user interface. Uh, if I click on any of these elements, we can see that again, the Visual Studio position us in each of the controls. These are some tools that we can use when we develop applications in .NET MAUI. Okay, the next topic that I want to, to share with you or that I want to, to explore with you is how can we manage the resources in our applications? When we create a project in Visual Studio, Visual Studio creates a set of different folders uh, so that we can manage different resources of our applications to customize the application. For example, we have a folder named fonts where we can add different fonts to customize our application. We can add different images. We can add splash screens, etc. And if any of the resources that are part of the application does not fit on, 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 on these folders, we can use a special folder named ra that lets you to, to work with PDF files, for example, with uh, with uh, PowerPoint files, for example, with audio files, etc. And to demonstrate it, this, I'm going to return to Visual Studio. Uh, let me open the Solution Explorer. You can see that the project created a set of different folders. In this case, I'm going to use the fonts folder. I have added a font, a specific font for this demonstration that is start again the more regular. You can use the font uh, when you drag and drop a, a font in, the, in this folder, but to work it easily, we can go to the file named mawiprogram.cs and we can add a, a line here in the configure font section to add an alias to this font so that we have and to remember, we, we, we don't have to, to use the whole name of the, of the font. We can use only the alias uh, and we can uh, easily use this font. We can return to the main page.saml uh, code and we can search for an element in which we want to modify the font family. In this case, I'm going to use this label control that serves as the title of the application. And we're going to, to use the, the property named font family equals to title. I'm going to save the changes. And you can see that in this simple way, we changed the, the, the aspect of the title of the application. We haven't to do anything, anything more. We, we did it in a very simple way. Uh, the same occurs with the images, with the splash, splash screens, etc. This is a very simple way to manage our resources in our application. So the next topic or another very important point when talking about .NET MAUI is resource dictionary. And a resource dictionary is a definition that you can add at application, page, or layout level to reduce colors, font sizes, styles of a control, and so on. Uh, to explain it better, imagine that you want to create an application that have the, this set of buttons. You can see that the properties of these buttons repeats, uh, repeats uh, for every value. For example, we have a background color with purple color. We have a, a border color with a light gray color, etc. What we can do, uh, well, uh, the only property that doesn't change is the text property. We have a different value for each of these buttons. So what we can do is to take the properties that changes, in this case, the background color, the border color, etc., and place these properties inside a style inside a resource dictionary, inside a resources section, in this case of the content page. What we're seeing here is that we want to modify all, all the buttons 
inside the content page, we are specifying which properties are going to be affected. In this case, uh, the properties that I said you earlier. And with this, look how we have simplified the XAML resulting code. We only have to specify the property that changes, that in this case is the text property. We have the same result in the application. And with this, we have a very simplified way to, to manage uh, all, the, uh, all the, the aspect of the different controls. Uh, I'm going to return to Visual Studio to demonstrate this. Inside the, the, the default project, I have here uh, inside the resources folder, a folder named styles which contains a styles.saml uh, file. This file uh, is inside all the, all, uh, all every new created uh, project. We have here a resource dictionary. We have a set of different styles. Each styles affects a different uh, control. In this case, activity indicator, activity indicator view, border box view, et cetera. So if we want to, to change any default behavior or any default design, we can, come here to this style, to this, uh, to this uh, SAML file, and we can change any of the properties that are created by default. We can change, for example, font size. We can change corner radius of a button, et cetera. Or you can create also your, your own dictionaries for each of your applications so that you don't have to reuse or you don't have to use the default dictionary. Another feature in .NET MAUI that simplifies our life a lot is to be able to specify in a very easy way what will be the visual appearance when the user makes a switch between dark and light dims on their mobile, de mobile device. We know that we have no control over the mode that the user will have selected, so we must anticipate so that the users do not have bad experiences with our applications. And the way to do this is to use a markup extension named App Dim Binding. It is a very simple way to specify different values to assign when a dark mode is selected and when a light mode is selected. It is a very simple way. I'm going to demonstrate this uh, returning to Visual Studio. I return to main page.saml and look that at a content page level, we have assigned a background color. I'm going to change this line by another uh, line that I have here. Well, actually, we can set this up in binding. We specify what color is going to, to, to be when dark mode is selected. For example, this color and the light color is going to be this. So with this change, I return to the emulator and look how the color has changed. But if I go to the settings of the emulator, which you can find on the settings section, I'm going to the display section. I change the dark theme to be enabled. And with this, look how the, the background of the application changed immediately. So with this simple change, I control how the dark and the light themes are displayed to the user. I can do this in a dictionary so that the, that the different element changes when we have a dark light and a light uh, mode, I say. If, go, if we go to styles.saml, we can see this uh, in practically every style. We can see that each of the values have an, an app theme binding and a different light and a dark uh, mode selected. Uh, this is very simple to control. And you can use this to, to control the mode that the users has, has selected. OK, the examples we have seen so far are very useful. But as you start creating more complex applications, you will surely want to customize your graphical interfaces even more. I'm going to show you a series of tips to achieve this. The first example is this application that I created not long ago, a Pomodoro-like application. At first glance, you might think that the Pomodoro control has been extremely complex to create. I say this because, look, it has this gradient border that stands out from the center section. We also have this external glow effect, these vivid flames with irregular shapes, and a circle in the center with an image that looks quite complex. Perhaps upon seeing this design, you would be discouraged and would rather opt to create a simpler control. Shall I tell you a secret? It's not all about control customization. Actually, the controller used is a radial gauge control that looks like this. 
What makes it stand out is a background image I created for the control. So the combination results in this amazing mix without the need to create something so complex. I'm going to show the application quickly in a quickly way. Is this application that you can see on the screen. Here we have, it is this application. It looks quite good. I can set a time for the Pomodoro. I click on the start and the Pomodoro starts the, the, the task, the task to, to, uh, to counter down the, this timer. So let's return to the slides. Another way to create custom controls is to make combinations of controls. For example, in, a, in one application, I had to find a way to create custom stepper control as I didn't like the default control very much. The solution that I, that I, uh, that I create was to create a horizontal stack layout that you can see on the tree of, of the elements. And here I added a pair of buttons that represents the, the minus and the, and the more uh, scenarios. And, and with this, I control how the label control that is at the center display the different values of, of, of that is currently selected. Another example of this approach I used is the Amiibopedia application in which I needed to create a search engine that matched the background of the application to look very nice. So that, the, that I did was to create a grid layout that you can see on the screen. I create a round rectangle for the background and the round, uh, the round, uh, rounded corners. And I added a search bar for the functionality so that the user can search for the different amiibos in this application. The, the application is this one that I will show you. In this application, we can see this search bar. We can see a list of different amiibos that are going to appear. In, okay, here we are. We can search for an amiibo, for, for example, Bowser. And we have the different results shown because we search for this term. Another tip that I can give you is the, that occasionally you may want to customize one of the controls in its graphical interface to make it look different. This is, is also possible thanks to the use of control templates. For example, in one of the graphical interface challenges I did in previous days on YouTube, I had to replicate a dribble design of a coffee shop in which I had the option for the user to select the size of the cup of the coffee. Although I could have done the pure design without being functional, I decided to implement it. Thanks to the publication by David Ortinau, I was able to get the basis to replicate the design according to my needs. I'm going to show you really quickly. The, the, the page for the design is this. I have a section uh, with a horizontal stack layout and I had defined a bindable layout. A bindable layout basically lets you define some data for a specific layout. In this case, a horizontal stack layout. I am assigning three, three values for the data. And then in a property item template, I defined a data template. And I am saying that I want, I'm going to make it bigger. Okay. I am saying that I want to define a radio button for each of these elements. And I am modifying the, the visual appearance of the control with a control template in which I'm saying that I want to create a grid. I want a border to create the rounded edges. And inside, I want a label to show the size of the coffee. And the, inside the, the definition of the control template, I am creating a visual state groups so that I can decide which design is going to be shown when the user checked an option or, or when the user select the, the, checked, the, the checked control, uh, the radio button uh, control. Here I am saying that, that when the control is checked, I'm going to modify some, some, some controls. In this case, the text label control and the container control, which are the controls that we see on the control template, these elements. I am specifying which properties I'm going to modify and which values are going to be as assigned when we have a checked states and what values are going to be shown when we have an unchecked. Uh, okay, here we have the application. 
I have the section to select the size of the coffee cup and look how, uh, how beautiful this design is. I am saying, or I am defining which, which is going to be the visual state when a, an element is selected and what, uh, which design is going to be selected when the user doesn't select the element. So it is a, a very good uh, tip to know. Let's look at another concept that can help you create better user experiences, animations. In .NET MAUI, we have quite a large variety of default animations. We have those that allow control rotations, also animations to perform scaling of the controls, animations for moving elements from one place to another, and animations to fade controls as in the example we see on the screen. But not only that, it is also possible to place animations one after the other so that they will be executed sequentially according to the given instructions. In case you don't want a sequential execution but several animations to be executed in parallel, it is also possible to do it, as in this case, in which a rotation and a scaling are performed at the same time. And once these animations are finished, a final scaling is performed. Although it, if you are more, more adventurous and want something much more, much more complex, it is also possible to make custom animations where you can specify what will happen in each keyframe during the animation, achieving even more complex effects. We can create a different designs using the animations. For example, I have created a, an application that simulates the creation of an image generated by, uh, by AI. So after some seconds, look the different animations that happens in the application. In case you didn't see it very well, I'm going to re-execute the application. Okay, let's wait for a few seconds. It simulates that it is generating the image. Okay, look that the different animations are happening in a sequential way, but, uh, but uh, following some instructions that I gave so that this looks quite good. So you can use animations to make uh, your, your user interfaces even better. Okay, let's look at the last section of the talk, which is focused on tips for handling different screen sizes. This is a topic that is often requested and would require a whole talk because there are so many things you can do to achieve this. On this occasion, we're going to focus on the simplest ones. First of all, you should know that there is a property called font auto scaling enabled included in the .NET MAUI controls and that by default, it has a true value. What this property will do is take the user's device configuration as, as the basis for displaying items in the application. For example, with this factory setting, you can see a screen displayed in one of the emulators. As soon as the font size is increased, you can see how the size of the application elements increases automatically. This is a fact that I think it is important for you to know. Also, if you, want, if you would like this behavior to not to occur, you can set the property to false. The second tip is a markup extension called onPlatform, which allows to detect the platform and based on this, assign different values for a property. In this example, we indicate that if an Android device is detected, the box view should have a height of 300 units, a width of 300 units, and a green background color, which is the result you can see on the right. If we run the same application in Windows, a box view is displayed with other properties thanks to the on-platform extension. We also have a markup extension called on-idiom, which unlike on-platform, allows us to detect the type of device we are on, whether it is a phone, tablet, desktop, and so on. In this example, we see a box view with a blue background color because it was detected that I ran the application on a Windows computer. On the other hand, running the application in the Android phone emulator, a phone device has been detected. So the box view background is red. Let's see how we can exploit these features with a practical example. For this, I return to Visual Studio Code. And here we have an application, a demonstration application named Weather21. I have several pages here created. Let's review this home page .saml, uh, page. Uh, here we can see different configurations for different uh, mm, displaying devices. For example, we can use the, the, the tips that I gave you earlier 
to define different calming definitions. When we detect that the that the application is been running on a phone, we can set we can say that we want only one column, and that when when we have a other device, we can specify that we we want a, a two columns, one with an asterisk and the second with 500 uh, units of space. We can do it for different layouts also. For example, vertical stack layout. We can define the padding from for an element. We can specify the spacing. We can define if an element is visible or not. For example, a flex layout, if it is visible in the case of a widget section, we can say that uh, when we have a phone uh, device, it is false. And in any other type of device, it is it has a true value. We can review these examples. The, the examples are, are available in the .NET MAUI uh, demo section in a GitHub repository. So this is a simple way to define uh, how can we show the user different elements in their applications? Okay, it's time for the Q&A, but before that, I would love to invite you to my social networks where you can find more information about .NET MAUI development and .NET technologies in general. All right, so thank you very much, Hector. It was a really, really nice share of uh, tips. Uh, I think we have learned quite a lot. Uh, we will uh, ask Bruno and our friends uh, how, how it was, but I, I am really amazed of all these uh, capabilities from .NET MAUI. I think it is even easier because uh, previously in Xamarin, uh, let's say, you have to manually add uh, styles, for example, or some uh, resources um, uh, like uh, the for light, uh, dark theme support, or the, the the templates. But now, let's say there is a default, predefined templates and styles that you can use, uh, and of course modify if you if you want. Uh, what do you think, Bruno? I like it. Uh, I'm not the best designer ever, so anything that I can learn, it's super cool. I love the gosh because it's super amazing how with the simple background image it changed completely the, 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 the UI and experience, so I love it. And hey, there are a couple of, and by the way, I shared it before. You can see that Hector really knows his stuff because he's using sharing the screen with big font, using <laughs> Zoom, focus on the right. So he cares about the presentation. You can tell that we usually start with a big font. Nobody reads anything. People asking Zoom the font. He knows his stuff. So no, I love it. Do you want to do a quick review of the question that we have? Because we have a couple of amazing ones. Yes, yes. Please. Okay, okay, so we have here, so sorry in advance if I said the, if you pronounced your name bad, we have here Gopal asking if we can generate SAML controls dynamically uh, from code at runtime. I think yes, but I will rely on you expert for <laughs> for a better answer. Yeah, absolutely. We can we can achieve this. We can create controls from code behind from uh, from C sharp files. Even you can create your user inter interfaces with only C sharp code. It is possible. Uh, you have to, to to watch the entire series to 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 learn how to do this. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Next one. <laughs> do you share this one to to the audience, Luis? But. I would love to also <laughs> give this to Hector. So do you have any tip? I mean, I, I know that you did seven, eight different tips, but <laughs> do you have something like, okay, when I want to do something and I want to improve, where do you start? Do you have some kind of guidance there? Uh, I inspire a lot of the trivial designs because I think that, that right. there are amazing designers that, that make uh, really cool designs. But the complicated part a lot of times is to replicate that designs from Dribble to a uh, SAML code. So with these tips that I gave you, uh, I hope that that it is more enjoyable to you to create or to, or to replicate that designs. How about you, Luis? Any advice there? Uh, I follow the experts. <laughs> there are a lot of, <laughs> let's say, .NET MAUI people who focus on, on this part. Hector is one of them, besides he's a 
really nice uh, developer and instructor. I remember also Leo Maris, who is a Microsoft MVP. Brian has done some um, designs, and I think he has even submitted to Javier Suarez Ruiz uh, GitHub repository. He has the good uh, looking UI samples, and I saw that Brian submitted one, one sample there. Also, I don't know, there, there are a lot of talented people, so I look at the repositories or posts or videos. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, they, they also, uh, and there is also Daniel Monetelli who has uh, also participated in, in this. Uh, and then I can get some inspiration or, oh, I like this design, how was it done? Okay, then I can adapt it to my project. So yeah, I follow the experts. Hey, love it, thanks. <laughs> Next one, and this is kind of an important one and I'm guessing that we, got, we should probably, we may probably, spend the full show talking about accessibility. Do we have accessibility features here? Any tag, any decoration, any way to focus also there, which is always a super important part when we are building and creating and designing applications? Yeah, uh, I think that the team has uh, has incorporated a lot of features to, to, to add these accessibility features. Even I can remember that that James talked about these features in the previous talk. So I recommend that you watch the, the series for, for the entire series for learning about that. And it, by default, Visual Studio creates a project with a set of different tags that you can use or you can uh, yeah, uh, you can use to, to your, your applications and you can learn more about this on the documentation. But yes, we have accessibility features in .NET MAUI. And to add uh, this, uh, we also have the semantic properties in .NET MAUI projects. Uh, right when you create one, one project, um, the, let's say, button or labels or different controls already include these semantic properties, which means that, for example, if someone activates, uh, let's say, this, um, how is it called? Uh, you know that there are some precisely uh, accessibility features on the on the on the device. Let's say for people who have issues with uh, their sight, so so they have this like uh, voice to sorry text to voice let's say uh, application on, on configuration on settings, and you as a developer can add these uh, semantic properties to your views or controls, and it will. Uh, let's say the application, or sorry, the, the OS, let's say Android, will talk like, uh, okay, this button is used for this, this label, or this is the text of the application. So maybe people who are blind uh, can understand what's happening on the, on the application, or you can, in this case, uh, support them, let's say. Okay, perfect. Uh, we have a couple more questions. I am, we have Mark with a question, but I am going to switch to not flavor from New York, I said, because you have only one vocal in six letters, so it's kind of hard for me to say. So, but hey, I like this one. So, the complex stacking is nice, but has a render score with reviews over previous Xamarin versions. Do you have any idea if I'm guessing that is kind of we lost quality here or something like this with Maui versus Xamarin? Uh, I think that it was one of the main reasons to to re, to recreate well well to to create .NET MAUI because the team wanted to 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 um, to take all the experience all the experience of the, of Xamarin Forms to create this new framework uh, um, correcting a, a lot of different bugs a lot of different uh, precisely uh, render costs for example they created a horizontal uh, vert and, and vertical stack layouts. That improves the the, the rendering of, of the different uh, elements in your screen, and they redesigned a lot of, of different stuff for for the of the layouts and the pages so that the that the uh, performance is better than Xamarin Forms. It is true that that there are some some uh, sort of bugs or some sort of of things that have to improve a lot more. But definitely, they ha they have done a, a great work on this. 
Cool. So going for the one of the last ones, Mark. Is there a feature like the Android navigation fragment in Maui? I really don't know. Uh, well, um, I don't remember what. I think there isn't. Uh, but of course, you can include, uh, let's say, uh, native code, like in your uh, C Sharp classes inside the Android platform uh, folder uh, to, to even add native controls. But let's say the like the design or navigation part to uh, like send um, send uh, like uh, parameters between one fragment to another one. Let's say that a specific UI does not exist, so you have to do it or code it. Let's say manually in the native part. I, I would say. Because regarding the navigation uh, or the page types that are, let's say, supported in .NET MAUI, they are the ones that Hector shared at the beginning. The, uh, like the, the content page, navigation page, tab bar, and so. But then if you want to add native, let's say, implementation, you have to do it specifically for the, for the Android class. Yeah, we have to remember that .NET MAUI is a framework for targeting different platforms, not only Android. So the different mm -hmm. pages has have to, to have the same behavior over the different platforms. Sure. Uh, and another tip that I can give you is to, to constantly check for the .NET MAUI community toolkit. They add different pages, controls, layouts uh, regularly. So this can be another place to, to check for, for different controls. Uh, if the control is not implemented here, you can ask for the team to, to implement it if they have time to do that. Or you can add your contribution contributions uh, for this, and they can add it to the toolkit. Awesome. And the last one is... Uh, no, sorry. Uh, Mark, the, going back to NAT, to NAT flavor. Yes. Material support. Any material you support on the Android support? Uh, uh, this one is, I really don't know. You probably need to Google. I'm sorry. I probably need to Bing this one. Uh, but I don't know if you know something here. I know that there are some projects that tries to, to achieve this. Uh, for example, Javier has a lot of information about custom controls, custom themes. Uh, we have another tier party plugins that we can use to achieve the material material effects <laughs> uh, also you can implement your own uh, your own implementation for achieve this but the, in the official way I do I, I know that there is not a, a, an official implementation for this I know if Luis has another uh, another tape about this uh, yeah for, um, that, like officially no but maybe community supported uh, later yes. But I don't remember exactly now one. <laughs> hey, I know. I mean, is the is the guessing time or is the what do we know and what we don't know? If we know yes. something, we're probably going to do a session around that in the future. But yes. hey, thanks a lot. Thanks everyone who asked the question. Thanks, Hector, for the presentation for everything. <laughs> Luis, Thank I'm you. so sorry. We always give no, you it's cool. very, very short time at the end. <laughs> to do. It's cool. It's part of the it's part of the challenge. So thank you very yeah, much, Hector, for this. Amazing, no, thank you for the invitation. Amazing. Thank you for the invitation and, and anything I'm here to, to share with you. Thank you. Yes, I am going to still watch in the chat. I'm going to still add in the chat and work in there. So but yes, let's let's bring Luis, it's all yours. Okay, perfect. So well, I just share. Uh, the link for part two. So you can, uh, if you go back to our repository, actually, uh, there are, let's say, three uh, parts that we are going to implement to improve our UI design. And uh, let's say all of them were explained by Hector. Uh, so let's, uh, let's bring them on. So um, you can open the application that we uh, created last last week, and the first uh, change that we are going to implement is actually the dark light uh, theme uh, support. 
which Hector uh, showed uh, a few minutes ago. So basically, we are going to uh, add, for example, the background color uh, with the upstream binding. So it uh, has some specific color when it is like mode and a different one when the, the device is uh, uh, set to dark mode. So I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to tell you where we are going to enter it. Okay, so I have the application already open and it is actually running already. And this is how it looks, right? So uh, just a second, maybe I'm going to do this here. Good. So in the, let's say, content page definition, I'm going, um, well, I can do it below. I'm going to paste this uh, code, which uh, is to uh, set the background color, okay? You can observe that for light, we have secondary, and for dark, we have primary. Where are these two elements defined? If you remember, I uh, mentioned to Hector that .NET MAUI already includes some styles, some template definitions, and we can find them in the resources folder and then styles. And here we have, for example, styles.saml and colors.saml. Okay, for colors, actually, uh, you can observe primary and secondary. So these are the colors. This is uh, dark purple and this is light purple. I'm going to save this page. And okay, yeah, probably I, I need to just refresh. Okay, so I will just run it again. And you will see that the background color is not gray anymore. The default is gray, but now you will observe that it is a light purple color. Just give it some seconds. Yeah, okay, maybe we cannot see it at all. Anyways, <laughs> ah, sorry, actually I changed main page. I should not have changed main page. Uh, it, was, it is my bad. It is recipe, please you. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so I paste uh, the background color here, save it, and you can see, right, that uh, it is now light purple. And say, similar to what Hector did, I'm going to enable the dark theme, and you are going to observe that now it is this uh, dark purple uh, background for our application. So we are going to uh, repeat similar, uh, let's say, implementation Oops, um, for the label, for example, and even the bottom. So for the label, I'm going to bring all this code. Basically, we are going to modify the font size uh, we are going to also uh, set the label at the beginning, rather that at the center, we are going to bold it. And here you can observe in the text color, again, similar definition uh, with the light and dark colors. So uh, just a second, so you will see the changes. This is the label, I'm going to delete it, I'm going to paste it and save it. And now you can observe, right? We have this uh, raspberry smoothie with uh, actually the light purple color. If I uh, switch it back, you will see that now the font color is with the uh, dark purple uh, one. So, yeah. And we will do similar uh, code for the share button, but uh, it can also be, let's say, a simpler definition because as you can see, it is not necessary that we use an static resource for both light and dark. We can also just say, okay, light color is black and dark is white, or also use the hexadecimal color uh, that Hector showed in the example. So let's bring it, copy, and paste it here. Okay. And what's the result? Now there is a uh, black, uh, let's say background, for our button and also the uh, text color is white. So this, uh, this, this works and all you need to do is to extend a bit more the definition for your colors. Of course, you don't have to do it for every control. Imagine that you have like six buttons. You don't have to do it uh, one by one. You can uh, organize this into some style or some 
a resource template, uh, sorry, resource dictionary, and just reuse it, applying the style to all six buttons. Okay, so this is one of the first uh, things that we can do to improve uh, the accessibility of our application. Our users appreciate it. <laughs> okay, perfect. Now, um, we can continue with another uh, example. So, yeah, just a second. Ah, yes, what we are going to do, something very simple. As you can observe, our image is, uh, let's say, a plain rectangle. But what if we would like to round the corner? This uh, adds, let's say, a nice touch to our, uh, our pictures. And it is quite easy. There are different ways to do it. We can even uh, circle the, the image, and we will do it for, for the button, for example. But in this case, we are going to grab our image into a frame. As you can observe in the frame, OK, so the frame is basically like a border, OK? And uh, we can define the, the, the first tip is that, OK, if we want to round the corners, the padding, that is some uh, separation between the frame and the child controls or children's, children, uh, needs to be zero. Then we define a corner radius and uh, this property is clipped to bounds. So there is no margin between the frame and the children. And that's it. We don't need to modify anything from our image picture. So I'm going to bring this code for the frame. Uh, I'm going to do it uh, step by step. So basically, uh, here, I'm going to add the frame and just close the tag. Just a second for the frame, Good. and that's it. I save it, and now you can observe that uh, there, are, there is a corner uh, rounded in our image. If you want, I can make it bigger, 50, and uh, yes, you can observe that uh, it is uh, more clear, okay? And very simple to, to add this. The final one, I don't know if I will uh, achieve it because there are like seven minutes, but let's try. So basically, we are going to add custom fonts, which is another example that Hector uh, showed in, show in the demo. So for this, we are going to use a free and open source library, even though it also has, I think, a pro version. Uh, it is called Material Design Icons. So to install them, actually, you don't go to the website and there is some uh, zip folder that you can download and extract. We need to use a uh, node package manager. Uh, and sorry, uh, yeah, so, so we need to actually run this program, uh, npm install. Uh, and and this, uh, this is the, let's say, library name, at mdi slash font. So for this, you can open a terminal, some shell. I will not do it. Uh, at all because I already have them. But essentially, if I go to my fonts file, you will observe that, uh, yes, all of them are already there. I changed to node modules. And there is, uh, yeah, the MDI package and, and so on. Okay, yes, so all the fonts are, are there. Actually, I think I have it open. Okay, I won't. <laughs> So just a second, I will very quickly browse here. Uh, because essentially, it will download, for example, the true type font and other files. And we need this uh, true type font. You can observe here, material design icons, web font, TTF, to add it into our application. So here in the fonts folder under resources, we are going to add existing item. I'm going to bring this path and change to all files. Then we have, okay? We have added this uh, file into our application. And now in the MAUI program CS file, we are going to register our font. For that, we add fonts.addFont. And we need two elements. The file name 
and the alias. Hector also mentioned this. So for the file name, I'm going to copy. Just a second. Okay, maybe here. Yes, I'm going to copy this. And maybe for the um, name, I will use material design icons. Okay, good. Now, uh, this font, uh, as the name uh, suggests, is a set of icons. And uh, we will need to know the glyphs, that is uh, some hashtag code and Unicode, uh, to, let's say, implement them into our application. Fortunately, there is a library, just a second, that we can use to actually create a helper class. It will create a C sharp class that will simplify how we are going to bring these icons into uh, our SAML pages or resources. So for that, let's visit this website. You can uh, see here on step number three, icon font to code. Essentially here you uh, browse the file and you upload it and it will generate a C sharp class code, which is here. Okay. And you can observe it, it has the Unicode code and some, let's say, uh, reference, of course, of the uh, icon that it represents. So this is the idea, adding this element to uh, add, let's say, icons. They are not images, they are actually font elements. So I'm going to copy the whole class to the clipboard. There is a nice button here. And let's add a new folder, a new folder, helpers. Okay, I already have it, it seems. Okay, I see. Um, okay, anyways, it, it doesn't matter at all. Um, uh, in this new folder, let's bring the uh, font icons.cs and I paste this. Okay, so here we have it. And just for the records, yeah, I can put, okay, the name does, it, it, it's not important at all. So now we are ready to consume it into our application. So for that, just a second, I have it here. Um, yes. So in this case, let's say we want to, uh, let's say uh, add some icon into our button. First of all, we need a reference to the uh, namespace. So for that, in the recipes list view, we are going to add a, a reference, let's call it helpers, and let's bring the helpers. Uh, okay, I think it was new folder because it, it changed. For some reason, I could not create the other one. But anyways, this is the reference to the folder where we added, let's say, the font icon class. And now, instead of, for example, this chair, I could say, uh, Static resource. Uh, sorry, not the static resource, but uh, the, the text. Sorry. Uh, uh, okay, it's x dot. Sorry, not sure what happened here. Okay, static. Yes, and we also add the font family. Font family is and just a second because we added here the font family is this one. Material design icons. And now we have the uh, icon font, that was the name of the, yes, icon font dot. And here we can bring uh, whichever we want. For example, share, share, I think it was share variant. Yes. So just like that, I'm going to run it. And you will see that now the text is this icon. Uh, okay, uh, while it is uh, loading the emulator, this is the, the result. Uh, well, of course, I will not see the uh, round, let's say, button because I have not added the, the code. Uh, but you can observe that we are adding here width and height, let's say 50 and 50, and half of the size will be used for a corner radius. And that adds a circle button uh, effect. 
right? And yeah, this would be the, the, the result. It always takes some time to, um, let's say, compile and build, because especially because we added a new file and also the, the new class. Uh, but yeah, the, the result should be that we should we could see the icon. Yes, you can observe here that there is this uh, shared icon. Maybe I increase the font size, font size 60, so you can observe it. Yes, that's the idea. Now, let's say as homework for you, just implement the code, the final code that I have there, so you can observe the uh, circle button. And yeah, that's it. Very simple, very fast, but I think uh, it is a nice improvement over the basic application with a very simple, let's say, uh, actually not code at all, but tips that we learned from Hector. What do no, you think? It's, it's amazing. I mean, I love it. It's really, really <laughs> bringing a different, it's a different flavor. You have a different life in the app. So we are on time. Thanks, everyone. Remember that if you want to check our daily, our weekly advance, you can clone the repo. Someone asking if they can add code. Hey, feel free to add a PR. Uh, if you have any suggestion, if you have anything that you want to improve, please uh, submit a pull request and we will uh, check it and work it. Uh, we just shared the link of the of the survey. We loved your feedback, so let us know if we can do something better. If we can do, if you want to see something else, we really really, really love your your feedback. We are going to talk next week about MVVM pattern. Yes, MVVM oh pattern God. on week three. Uh, mm -hmm. So this will be a really uh, nice, let's say, way to architecture our application. So for that, we have Christian Gonzalez, also from Mexico. So yeah, he will share his experience about it. Yeah. So once again, thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. And hey, if you speak Spanish, see you Wednesday, because we are going to see do a session, but in Spanish. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you.